but uh, May 2nd, 2015, I don't even have any idea how long it's been since I've even done this. It makes me mad that I've got this camcorder down here and uh, apparently it's too tough or I'm too lazy to pick this thing up and push record. I did it for about a week. Every time I would, you know, even play just a rock, I would hit record just in case I did something. Um, and I've lost that habit. Um, it's, like I said, the 2nd of May, and all kinds of stuff has happened. Uh, Pool-wise, um, probably the most obvious on the screen, and I really think you'll be able to see it, is that this is new. I have my rails replaced. I don't have to point everything it is, but um, you can probably tell that it's a lot darker than the old stuff was. I'm getting used to it. It's not quite as bad as I thought it was going to be at first. But this is a blue label diamond now. So it plays just like the ones at Derby City and any of the newer diamond tables you're going to get. Um, the blue diamond logos over at the other end of the table, you can't see it. Uh, Pro Cut Pockets, they're not double shimmed uh, like the old things were. And actually, um, they're maybe even a little bit tighter than the old ones were. So as I've long su suspected, when I had the, the rubber replaced on my old cushions, it went from a pro cut to probably a standard cut. And then I had it double shim to get it to about four and a half inches. These are about four and seventeen inches. Bear with me, I have to adjust this camera because it's bugging me a little bit. I'm not quite horizontally centered. And... I think I am now, although I think I'm also tilted a little bit, which is very annoying. Is, the, is my counter going up? Yep. Um, so the table is a big thing. It's got, oh, it's got the 860HR cloth on it, which is the first time I've ever had the HR cloth. Uh, I was going to get it. I asked, I called Brian and asked him about it. I said, is it any faster than the regular 860 that I'm used to? And the reason I really wanted to know that was because even when my table's brand new, freshly recovered, it's never been as fast as the tables at Derby. And so there's always an adjustment when I get down there and have to play on one of those tables that's so fast. Um, he said, yes, uh, HR is faster, and just so happens that that's all he does with the blue cloth anymore. The last time that my table had been recovered had been a year and a half ago, and he was still using the, the non-HR stuff. So... Uh, this table is quite a bit faster than anything that I've had in my basement before, and I'm going to say it's as fast as anything I've played on at Derby, which I want to happen. Um, I want it to be that fast, not because I necessarily just love fast tables so much, but because that's one less adjustment I'm going to have to make when I get into a match there. Uh, I think I don't think it's any secret that the things that I do down here, the practicing that I do, are to get ready for Derby. That's my my big thing of the year, and, and, and that's what I want to do well in. So I'm just trying to do away with whatever excuses I can. Um, another thing that's new, at least for right now, I don't know how long it's going to last, but it's lasted a week or so, is uh, I'm shooting with the Josh Sneaky Pete, the Hoppy style, um, and I've got this extension, this Florence extension on it. Um, it for the first couple of days... <clears throat> Because of the added weight of this extension, uh, this whole cube gets up to about 21 ounces, and that seemed like too much. Uh, I am rapidly getting used to that. Also, this shaft is my original Predator 314 shaft. It's, it's, I don't know if, if you remember, you're me, but uh, I've had time to think about it. You haven't. Is I got this single shaft a, a couple of years later. I got another one which was a, it was a different style. The ferrule is shorter, noticeably shorter, and also the shaft itself a bit larger diameter. And a couple years after that, I got a, a, a matching shaft to that one. And that's actually the one that I've been using all the time, which is it, it's the uh, one with the black line, uh, supposedly second. But with this cube, for some reason, I'm shooting with this shaft. I really think the big difference is the tip. I think this might even have one of the old Mori tips that apparently you can't get anymore. Uh, I really like it. At first I thought it, that maybe I even had a little pro on it, but it does look layered to me. So I think this is one of the Mori, the original Mori tips that you can't get. So, oh well, right? Um, I'm not 
my game's all right. I mean, I, I feel like I'm shooting really well uh, on a shot-by-shot -shot basis. I'm not having as, as many eight-and-outs, um, but maybe that's because I'm trying to be a little bit less retarded when I play and trying not to take any as many stupid chances. Um, young Chuck has a lot to do with that because he's been killing me. I play him 11-7, um, and he gets a break. And that's, that's a tough spot. And when I do win uh, with that against him, I feel like I've accomplished something. But I can't do that by being retarded. I have to be at least somewhat smart. I'm not going to be as smart about one pocket as he is, but I can be smarter than I, than I normally am at it. So anyway, I'm gonna, I was going to yammer a little bit, and I was going to shoot. And then at least I have a tape that I can, or a, a video, and I can put that on on the computer so I can say I've done something in 2015 as far as this camcorder goes. Um, I think that's probably what I'm going to do is just uh, play a little game of one pocket against myself and then stop this. Uh, ideally I would come back later on and play a race, maybe do some banks, something like that. Uh, I have no script, I never do. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Oh, the, the rack, shit. This here is the Delta Elite rack and this is not a commercial, right? It's a freaking triangle, and it's made out of aluminum, and it's loud. And I'm like, okay, what's going to be so great about this? This is the best rack that I've ever had. Um, the ball's rack tight. This thing does not bow in and out. And I guess the ball's pressing up against it don't distort it. And that must have happened with, with my, hang on, with this old wooden rack. That must have been happening. Even though I thought this was a really good rack, um, this is piece of crap compared to this Delta 13. And I think it's probably because the balls over the years have dented the size of that rack on the inside a little bit and made it tougher to do. So anyway, I love this rack. And I'm going to go ahead and play a game in one pocket and see what happens. Let's see here. I am... I've been having some success with bottom inside on my break instead of top inside and regular inside. Um, if I hit it good, I'm having a lot more success at getting the cue ball on the side rim. If I hit it bad, it's kind of the same thing as on, on my other breaks. If I hit it bad, I hit it bad. But I've been having more success when I hit it well of getting the cue ball stuck to this rail with using bottom inside. I usually don't have as many balls move out but I'm not taking as much of a risk, and I'm certainly not moving that seven ball, that corner left ball, uh, out as often with this bottom left when I hit it right. With this bottom right, I mean, sorry. Because I see that, and then there it jumps. Uh, that's just the way it works. You see, not a whole lot of balls moved out. If that ball wouldn't have moved, moved it kind of makes me mad that I just got done bragging about how I don't sell up that corner ball. And I may very well have just sold it out. That is a... I do not believe that is a makeable cut. These two balls are not lined up. So, in my quest to not be stupid, I just kick it to 12. I can get behind that 12 and kick at it. And I'm not trying to kick in or anything. One thing about this table is it does play really fast. So it's, I have to be careful, even though it sounds kind of stupid, I have to be careful not to kick the 12 so much that it comes over here and back towards this pocket and sells out the 12. Um, that's something I actually have to be aware of because this table is playing so fast. And right now I'm actually looking at this 15 because this 15 is dead off the 4. If I had a better way to get to it, that would be a good shot to shoot. I'm going to keep that in mind and maybe, you know, kick at it later on if my opponent doesn't see it. So this is just a little kick. Trying to get to 12, basically straight towards that 7. And then do that. And I sold, sold out a bank on a 12. Uh, so, now we're out, of, we're out of win, right? I was talking about this 15 being dead. Because I'm talking to the camera, I forgot who was shooting. The 15 is dead for the break. Now I'm going to shoot now. No, I got other balls up here I want to shoot first. 
once I make this 12. Again, this table plays so fast, I have to watch this. It's very easy for me to hit this 12 short and have it come all the way back over there. I don't want that to happen. I don't like banking soft, but this table is making me bank soft. screwed up right off the bat. And I think now I just get rid of the seven because I fucked up that game, didn't I? Okay. One, zero. Now, I'm this guy and I know this is dead so I'm moving it because I don't like it. Now they're no longer dead. Now you probably just saw, if I, if I wasn't in your way, that ball rolled off. It rolled that way on the way down the table, and that's why it went in. I've had a, a few shots over here where I could, it could have sworn the ball's coming down and rolls off this way. But it seems like if I set up a cue ball on a ramp and roll it this direction, or shoot one softly in this direction, it rolls straight. I, I, I don't know what the hell's going on, but it, I mean, that definitely, to me, looked like I had a roll. I think that ball was going to go maybe about a quarter diamond. It was going to hit outside the point of the pocket even. And it really took a dive in. Oh well, right? I played my cue ball speed instead of trying to do something cute and or retarded. So now I've just got a long, tough shot that I've got to play on myself here. Play for myself. But that ball actually did not roll off at all. It went exactly where I hit it. If it would have rolled off like the other one, it had a good chance of going in. That's not what happened. Two balls are still not dead. Because this cloth is still new, shots like that are going in um, because of the new cloth. Balls are sliding in the pocket a lot. I know that's not going to keep happening. But for now, I guess I'm just taking advantage of it and trying to keep the ball's pocket speed anyway on the banks. Most of the, a lot of the regular shots, like I'm going to shoot this eight, I can shoot a little bit firmer because I'm more confident that they're going to go in. So I don't have to worry as much about pocket speed. Now in this case, I'm just going to try to just nudge that 14, 13 down. Ideally, maybe... Do this, this, have the cue ball over here to not sell out that seven. And one of these balls might go down to give me a shot. Now I'm going to be have, leaving a bank on the one, so maybe that means it's not the right shot, but I'm still going to do it. Man, I missed it. But I got to leave that lead anyway. I was going to talk, I was going to talk before I was shooting. Um, the last couple of days I've been doing a lot more Alex Peggy Lyon type of shooting. It seems very accurate. We'll see you know, if I keep it up or not. Odds are I probably won't keep it up because I never keep anything up. Banking the one is no good because it's one ball basically. Unless I bank the one clean, then I could shoot the seven next. But odds are I bank the one that would go off the seven. The seven's coming over here somewhere. I don't have any other shot. And the eight is always there as a risk. So banking the one is not the right shot. Kicking the seven is a better shot because if I shoot it soft enough, then I will be able to hit the eight, either move the eight away from there, maybe bank it back towards my pocket, something like that. 
taking the seven is the correct shot in this case for me. really seeing anything horribly wrong with just uh, banking the eight back towards my pocket. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, that was a little bit unfortunate that I did that. But I did that so well, right? I have just a very slightest cut on this ball. I may be able to follow it forward. Hit the 13, 14 maybe. Maybe kick something down there and have a shot at it. it this, this stuff is still not dead. 11-6, there's no crab in there. Um, the problem with following this down is I'm going to leave a shot on the 8. If I miss the 1. And so I have to figure out, am I likely to miss this 1 ball? I don't think that I am likely to miss this one ball. Uh, probably what I should be doing now is just shooting a stop shot on the one, leave the cue ball over here, and then take the eight out. I'm trying to decide, you know, I, what are my odds of making the one, clipping something, pushing it down table, getting a shot at something, versus missing the one and selling at the eight. Or, now, if, I, if I make the one but don't clip anything out, then I just move the eight. So I got two thirds of a chance of this shot going well for me. And I guess that's what I'm going to do. All I got to do is make this one and not care as much about clipping something in the stack. I just got to make this ball. And that did. Okay, I did him, but a little bit full. I didn't knock anything down for me, so I'll just move the 8 out of my way. Move the 8 away from what's-his-face's pocket. I had to be sure, careful not to shoot that too hard, because something was pretty likely to come down here and leave an easy bank. I left a bank, but maybe not an easy enough bank to shoot. Scores 3 to two, and it's this guy's shot. This is an easy enough shot to shoot because the six, I'm going to hit the six next, so it's not like I'm going to sell out the world. I may sell out the 15, I just got to, I've got to trust myself to hit it accurately enough that I don't sell out the 15. to myself and I sold out the six anyway. I decided at the last second to, to try to push forward through that instead of like a bottom right and just hit the six kind of solid and stop. I don't know why I decided that. But it was obviously a, the wrong thing to decide. I still got my work cut out over here. None of this stuff goes, this combination goes, but I hate combinations. Um, if I try to shoot the six and come over here and hit the five like this, then I've got the eight. I don't believe I have enough angle to do anything better than that, or even to dive forward. So I'm just going to try to slide over and hit the 8, or hit the 5, and if I don't, then I'll have to figure something else out. Yep, and I didn't. Well, that was pretty sneaky the way that worked, though. I wasn't thinking that I could hit anything but the 5 and get a shot. I did not see that there is happening. So the 13 will go. The, the 5 will go, clearly the 2. And this combination is kind of messed up. The score is 3 to 3. I don't think I have enough angle on this 2 to fire it and punch over and back out. I can shoot the 2, follow forward and back around this way. This is probably what I should do. Because if I shoot the five there, I'm going to come off, I'm going to hit something here, knock yet another ball in this direction, and make it tougher to get out. But the only other choice I have right now is to shoot the two 
and try to draw back right for this 11. But I don't have that much angle. If I, I would end up drawing like in this direction, which would not be ideal, obviously. So it's just a matter of just making this two ball and stroking it with a little bit of inside. I don't want to put too much on it. Mostly just top. And i got to put a stroke on this ball. I think I had enough inside on it. If I, if I, but I needed to come around. I think I'd go forward too much. I didn't have enough inside. So this is the kind of point where I kind of get frustrated. I'm like, all right, I'm going to shoot anyway, even though I suck and I screwed that up. This four is a makeable shot. I have no guaranteed shot afterwards, but I'm going to shoot the four. So I have nothing. So now I just have to take this out. And it scores three to five. This guy's got three and it's his shot. I tried to hit that full and leave the cue ball here. And double, double, triple, quadruple, and up on all this stuff. That didn't happen. I screwed up. So I'm going to just trip over here for this 14. Yeah, I have to try my magic follow shot again. Come around for. Some, I could just follow up a little bit and play for a bank. Uh, maybe even cut to 10. And I don't know. I think I'm just going to play for a bank. It seems safer. I'm not really sure why it seems safer, but it does. And I tried to miss that ball and didn't quite miss it. Now this guy got seven, he needs one. Play this 15 pocket speed, just drift forward a little bit. Don't shoot the 15 so hard that it bounces all the way back over there. And obviously, don't let the cue ball run crazy and come up here. Um, this auto pretty much sense the game for this player. You don't have to try to get cute. You can get the cue ball behind the 13 or whatever. As a matter of fact, if I get the cue ball behind the 13, I'm going to bank at the 13. I either bank the 13 directly. Or a bank in the thir from the 13 into the 8. I don't want to do either one of those. I just want to just make this ball and don't directly sell out a straight in shot on either the 8 or the, thir or the 13. Alright, so there's that. I, I feel like I'm shooting okay. Uh, shot, shot by shot. I, you know, a couple mistakes, obviously. I don't feel like the the whole eight and out and all that is happening with anywhere near the regularity that it, it was for a while, but that's probably a good thing. It teaches me a little bit of humility. All right, I am going to uh, stop this now and maybe even come back later and make another video. You never know. Bye.